Hello, my name is Dr. Roderick L. Roll, and today I will be talking to you about organisms that affect the digestive system. More importantly, we're going to utilize several biochemical tests to identify etiology. As previously discussed, we separated out the organisms into families. The family that we discussed was Enterobacteriaceae. I further separated that into three categories. True pathogens like Salmonella, coliforms like E. coli, and non-coliforms. How to diagnose this family called Enterobacteriaceae? It is through selective media and differential media. Some examples are the citrate test, the endol test, motility test, methyl red, the Voorhees test, triple sugar iron test, and urease test. In this slide, what we are looking at is a selective test. This selective test is MSA or better known as mannitol salt agar. This test will allow halophiles to grow. A, a halophile is a salt tolerant microbe. So if you cannot grow in the presence of salt, then you were selected out from growing on a selective test. To the far right of this image, you see Staphylococcus aureus. It grew on MSA argoplates. In the middle, Staphylococcus epidermidis, it also grew on MSA plates. The one on the far left, Staphylococcus aureus, also produced uh, a lot of hydrogen atoms which increased the acidity or lowered the pH. In the mannitol salt agar we have phenol red, a pH indicator. As the pH decreases the color of the media changes to yellow. So this test selects for Staphylococcus and it will inhibit organisms that are not Staphylococcus. The differential part of this test is the color change. So Staphylococcus aureus versus Staphylococcus epidermidis is differentiated because of the color change. So this is the differential portion of the test. The next test we'll look at is going to utilize carbohydrates. It is called the phenol red broth test. So carbohydrates can be used in this test. A process called fermentation will also be used where we will starve the microbe of its needed oxygen and when we starve it of oxygen it is going to utilize the carbohydrate to generate NAD which will be utilized back in step 6 of glycolysis. So the function of fermentation is not to generate the ethanol or the lactic acid or the acetone. The purpose of fermentation is to generate NAD. Once NAD is generated it will be used in step 6 of glycolysis. 
So we utilize this carbohydrate fermentation test to differentiate between different bacterial groups, especially in the family of Enterobacteriaceae. So here is our family of organisms that we are discussing. We're going to be able to differentiate between organisms like Escherichia coli and Shigella or Salmonella and Enterobacter. This is what the phenol red broth test looks like. It will be a series of test tubes with a smaller tube that will be inverted inside. The smaller tube is referred to as a Durham tube. So we will utilize the phenol red which is a pH indicator and we will also utilize a sugar, a carbohydrate. So as discussed the basal medium of this phenol red broth test is going to contain a single carbohydrate type. This carbohydrate can be glucose, it can be a disaccharide like lactose or a disaccharide like sucrose. Any sugar source will work. Also inside of the phenol red broth we have the pH indicator. The one we're using is phenol red but as you can see in this slide other indicators can be used that have different colors. The third thing that we're going to have in this test tube is the Durham tube. This Durham tube will capture gas and as it captures the gas this Durham tube can float. The fermentation is going to generate excess hydrogen. In the biochemical pathway image below you can see this production of hydrogen. I have a red star which highlights the hydrogen that will be produced. This hydrogen is going to drive down the pH. As the pH drives down away from neutral the color of the phenol red is going to shift to yellow. Also while the shifting is occurring with the color the gas bubble will form. The gas that will be in the Durham tube is carbon dioxide. Look at the biochemical pathway image below and you can see that. If the gas is carbon dioxide, this is a positive indicator that a coliform is present. If we utilize a monosaccharide as the carbohydrate sugar, it will only indicate that we have a member of the Enterobacteriaceae family. Again, this is our table 11.4, so if we only use glucose as a sugar source, it only tells us that we have Enterobacteriaceae. One of those members is present. But if we change the sugar source to a more complex sugar like a disaccharide, we can differentiate even further within the family Enterobacteriaceae. So if we use lactose it will indicate if we have a coliform. So in the image below we know that we have, we have fermentation in the test tube num number one that is labeled A, but the one in the middle that's labeled A um, backslash G, that one also produces gas in the Durham tube. So this indicates that the one in the middle, the organism that was inoculated into that tube, 
is a coliform. Why? Because it produced a gas. In this Venn diagram, we have the smaller green circle is all of the organisms that would fall under Enterobacteriaceae. That is the family. We have Shigella, we have Yersinia, and Salmonella. Within that bigger circle, we have a smaller circle which indicates the total coliforms. These are all of the organisms that produce gas within 48 hours. Then we have a smaller circle within the total coliform circle. That smaller circle has organisms such as Escherichia coli. The difference in those two circles is the temperature at which lactose will produce the gas. This slide shows other sugar sources and how they can be used to differentiate organisms in the family of Enterobacteriaceae. For example, if we use maltose, we are able to differentiate the organism Proteus, Vulgarius, but it will not differentiate the other Proteus. If we use glucose as the sugar source, it can differentiate Neisseria gonorrhea, and we can use lactose to also differentiate between different genera, genera of um, Enterobacteriaceae. So by just changing the sugar source, we're able to, uh, we're able to determine etiology. In this slide, we're also looking at a selective and differential test. This test is referred to as EMB, Eosin Methylene Blue Test. We pour this just like in any other argot plate, and then we inoculate it with several different types of microbes. Only gram-negative microbes will grow on this petri dish. Therefore, this is a selective test. It selects for gram-negative and it restricts gram-positive from growing. In reference to the microbes that grow, we're looking for the presence of a clear colony or a colored colony. So based on that distinction, it will separate out the coliforms from the non-lactose fermenting enteric bacteria. So the ones that produce the, the colonies that are formed that have color will be lactose fermenting enteric bacilli. And the ones that grow that have a clear colony or non-lactose fermenting enteric bacilli. So utilize a light source from the bottom of the petri dish and you will be able to distinguish if the colony has a dark purple color or if it is clear. So if it has a dark purple mucoid type color, this is indicative of this microbe fermenting lactose within 24 hours and producing gas. A common bacteria that will perform that task is E. coli or Escherichia coli. E. coli will also produce a green metallic sheen in this EMB argot plate. That is indicative of vigorous acid production. The non-lactose producing fermenters will still grow on this EMB plate, 
but they will only produce a translucent color on their colony. An example of an organism that will grow and produce a translucent color is Shigella. A different test that we can perform that gives very similar results is the McConkie Auger test. It is also selective and differential. It will select for gram negative to grow and restrict from gram positive from growing. Coliforms will appear pink when grown on the McConkie Auger test. Non fermenting lactose organisms will be clear or non pink. The presence of coliforms in water is indicative of impure water and or poor sewage treatment. The next selective and differential test that we will discuss is the Simeon Citrate Argot test. This differentiates between soil growing coliforms and fecal coliforms. An example of a soil coliform is Enterobacter origins. An example of a fecal coliform is Escherichia coli. So back to our Venn diagram, now we're able to distinguish between the brown circle, which is totally total coliforms, and the red circle, which is just the fecal coliforms. In this test, we're looking for the presence or of either a green media or a blue media. The media originally was green. So if growth is observed on the green media, that is indicative of a fecal coliform growing. That would be a citrate negative test. The fecal coliform could be Escherichia coli. If the media changes color, if it changes to blue, that is indicative of soil coliform. That is a citrate positive test. Organisms such as Enterobacter origins will grow and test positive. In this slide, we see the chemical reactions of what happens in the citrate test. If the medium stays green, that is negative. But make sure you see growth. So green can indicate that the test tube was uninoculated or or it could represent that the organism just did not utilize this citrate test. So make sure you have growth before you say it's negative. If blue is the color that you observe, then the pH has shifted towards alkalinity. This would be a positive indicator for the citrate test. In this slide, I have listed several organisms that would test positive for the citrate test versus several organisms that would test negative. The ones that are highlighted in blue are the only ones you need to focus on. This slide is reminding you of why 
we are performing all of these selective tests and differential tests. It is to determine etiology. It is to determine what organism you have. So by using this dichotomous key, you can distinguish between enteric bacteria types. So please go through this dichotomous key to make sure you understand how it works. In this slide, we will look at an additional selective and differential test. This is called the SIM test. It is an all-in-one test for sulfide, indole, and motility. Let's separate each one of these out. In this slide, we've separated out the indol test. If there is a red layer on top of the media, that is a positive indicator of indol. A black color is indicative of hydrogen sulfide gas production. And finally, by utilizing a argodeep, you can differentiate if the microbe has flagella or cilia. If it has those two cytoskeletal filaments, it will be able to move. So on the far right test tube, the microbe was stabbed into an arga deep. The one on the left, it clearly moved and distributed its red pigment throughout the entire test tube. So the SIM test is able to differentiate if it's indole positive, if it's hydrogen sulfide positive, or if the microbe is able to move. 